Uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, so the last speaker of this afternoon in the algebraic and complex geometry session is Lucia Caporazzo from Roma Tre University, and she will talk about uh, recursive combinatorial aspects of compactified moduli spaces. Thank you very much. I am, of course, very honored to be here, and I also consider myself very lucky to be at this ICM, the first ICM in Brazil and the first ICM in the Southern Hemisphere. I, I really consider this a great luck. So good luck to Brazil, good luck to mathematical, Brazilian mathematics. Okay, so um, the purpose of the talk is to illustrate some progress that has been going on over the, say, past 10 years, um, during which some uh, interesting connections have been discovered between uh, certain important moduli spaces and on the one side the geometry of um, a polyhedral or combinatorial objects and on the other side uh, non-archimedian geometry or more precisely um, the, analytic, the analytic theory of Berkovich. So this, this has brought new, new insights to all three fields and so this, this, this is what I hope to illustrate with my, with my talk. The main, the main thing that I have behind, the main, the main question that I have behind is whether this, these connections are part of a more general picture. This is quite, this is quite a vague question, but this is basically what, 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 I, what motivated me to give this talk. And so let me start, let's see. So let me begin with the first slide where I, where I will outline the program in very generally. So the general situation is we have a moduli space M. In algebraic geometry, moduli spaces have a natural structure which reflects the properties of the parameterized object. In particular, our moduli spaces will not be complete, otherwise the whole discussion is not interesting. So to have something interesting, we, we need a moduli space that's not complete, which means that the generations are bound to occur. So we are parameterizing certain objects that degenerate to something more complicated, let's say. So the first step is that we have a completion of this object, or a compactification, as we say in algebraic geometry, a completion which has a recursive structure by topological type or by combinatorial type. The two things are related very closely. So we have a completion with a special type of structure. And this structure is so interesting that you can construct out of it a cone complex. The, the quotes are because this is not just a cone complex, it's something more complicated than that. Think of it as a cone complex for simplicity. And this cone, clock, cone complex, sigma bar of m bar, has, um, is also a moduli space. So it's not, just, uh, it's not just telling you how the boundary behaves, but it, it is a moduli space for combinatorial or polyhedral objects. So this was the first connection that I mentioned before. And then the third step in the picture, they're not really steps, they're sort of parts of the picture, is that this, this cone complex has a different incarnation. It appears as the skeleton of the analytification in the sense of Berkovich. This, this is this M bar AN. AN stands for analytification. It's the skeleton of the analytification in the sense of Berkovich of the completed moduli space we started with. I will, I will explain better what, what, what all these things mean. And then to put these three parts together, we have a fact that comes from the theory of Berkovich. The theory of Berkovich, of Berkovich tells us that if you have uh, the analytification of, a, of an algebraic scheme and its skeleton, the skeleton is um, a topological space onto which the analytification retracts, all right? So that map rho is the retraction map that comes from the theory. But the point is with these interpretation that we gave with the two, part, the two steps ahead, this map has a, a remarkable interpretation in geometric terms, and, and I, will, this, I will illustrate more precisely what this, what this general program means in the first example. So the first example is the fact that this program applies to the moduli space of smooth curves compactified by stable curves. So these are appeared exactly with the same notation in Rahul uh, Pandaripanda's lecture today. So these are exactly the same things if you were there. 
So the moduli space of smooth pointed curves of genus G, is, I'll draw a picture later for complex uh, curves, but they, they, they are just uh, smooth curves of genus G with N marked points on them. The space is non-complete, apart from some very special cases, and a well-known completion constructed by the Lee Manford and then Knudsen is the moduli space of stable and pointed curves. Stable curves are singular stable curves, i.e. Uh, stable curves that are not smooth. You should think of them as curves allowing the simplest possible type of singularity. So always, and locally speaking, always the same type, that is nodes. All right? And they also have finitely many automorphisms. That's, a, that's, that's something we don't need to think about too much. It's a technical condition needed to have a compact, a projective moduli space. All right, this is the, this is the example. And then we go to the combinatorial structure. Again, here I'm lucky. I'm using the same notation as Pandari Pandas talk, so this is good. So we have um, GN. G, GN is, the, is a partially ordered set with a grading, a graded Poe set, which parameterizes all stable graphs of genus G I will, with N legs. Uh, I will tell you what the Poe set structure is about. And that encodes. The, uh, combinatorial, the, the combinatorial structure of the boundary in, in, in the following sense. First of all, you see that map sigma, some m. So I will use the symbol sigma for stratification maps. You take a curve x, stable with n points, and associate to, its, to it its topological type, which is just the same as its dual graph. And now this map is not just any map, it, it has some interesting structure, it is a stratification, and it's recursive. Let me first tell you what, by, what I mean by stratification, and then what I mean by recursive. It is a stratification in exactly the sense you think. That is, the, in, a, in a topological sense, the closure of a stratum is a union of strata. And then the dimension of the strata are ruled by the grading of the poset. These are the basic properties you have to think. There are others, but let's not, let's not talk about them. Recursive means that the, the, the strata mg, the fibers of that map, can be described completely in terms of moduli spaces of smooth curves with mark points inductively, in the sense that the pair gn, the pair genus number of points, will go down inductively. So in that sense, this is an inductive, an inductive stratification, and this can be made precise, exactly precise. So if you've never seen this, let me show you an example. So this is an example over the complex numbers. Below, on the left, you have a stable curve below. So you have a copy of P1 attached to a copy of a curve of genus 1. And above, you have the dual graph, where to every component there corresponds a vertex, to every node there corresponds an edge of the graph, and the, the, the vertices are weighted by the geometric genus of the component. On the right, you have an example of a non-stable curve, so that at least, so as I said before, a stable curve is a nodal curve with finitely many automorphisms. It won't take you long to figure out that the curve on the right has infinitely many um, automorphisms. So let's leave that, okay? The point is that the P1 is attached to its complement only at two points, so that will have infinitely many automorphisms, and we don't want that. Otherwise, we won't get a uh, projective moduli space. Another picture below I have here, so this, this is the poset uh, stratifying the moduli space of curves of genus 2 with no points. You can, you, can, you can, for this talk, the mark points will not play any role. So this is why I gave this picture. So you see, in this picture, this is, you can think of this as the dual graph of the moduli space M2 bar, the moduli space of curves of genus 2. So at the top, you have that vertex of weight 2 that corresponds to the smooth locus, curves of genus 2 with no singularities. And then be, going down below, actually, you should go from, from, from the bottom up you should go from the bottom up. Uh, uh, but anyways, I started this way, let me continue. So if you look at the two graphs right below, you have two graphs, for example, the one on the left, the one with two vertices of weight one with one edge joining them. This corresponds to two curves of genus one attached at one node. Now, you, you get uh, the arrow, the, the partial ordering uh, from one uh, vertex of the central graph to the, to the other is given by contracting some edge. 
So this, this is the partial order on the set of uh, stable graphs of genus G. You contract edges and you have the order. A, a graph is greater than the other if, it's, if the second is obtained by, from the first by contracting an edge. All right, so if you contract the bridge between the two vertices of genus one, you get the vertex, the singleton of weight two. On the other side, if you contract that loop, the contraction remembers that you are contracting a cycle. So whenever you are contracting a cycle, the weight of the vertex you contract to increases its weight. So that's why you get from, 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 from one to two, and so on. So in that, in that picture, you have the structure of the boundary of M2 bar, and um, the, the horizontal levels correspond to co-dimension. So it's co-dimension 0, 1, 2, and 3. Modulate space of curves of genus 2 has dimension 3, as we all know. So this is the, this is the combinatorial structure of the boundary of M2 bar. Now let's go back to the general plan, now that we've seen these examples. So as I said before, uh, we construct a, a cone complex for, from the graded post at GGN, and it turns out, this is a discovery that dates back, well, I don't know, maybe four years or something. It turns out that this cone, this cone complex is, is a moduli space of so-called tropical curves. So I will tell you later exactly what a tropical curve is, but for now you should think of a tropical curve as a graph, exactly as the graphs you, we've been dealing with, with the additional structure that every length, every edge is given a length, a length as a real number, which is non-zero, but we allow the length to be equal to infinity so that the moduli space that we obtain, the MGN trop with a bar, is actually compact. Believe it or not, That's, this is exactly what we need to compactify. If we didn't, if we didn't add the infinity as a, an, allow, an allowed length to the edges, the moduli space will not be compact. But we need to add that infinity as a length, not only because we want a compact space, but because otherwise everything I'm going to say will just not work. All right, so I will, I will try to remember to explain why that is the case later. So this moduli space of extended, I will tend to forget to say extended. Extended is indicating that we allow the lengths to be equal to plus infinity. I will tend to forget that, but our tropical curves will always be extended, just like our stable curves will always be endpointed of genus G, etc. So I will not mention that later. Anyways, this was constructed. The first case was the first case uh, that is to say when with the genus zero and n points, this was constructed by Grisha Mikalkin. And then the general construct construction is due to Branetti Melo Viviani. And then we uh, somehow formalize the isomorphism um, with the cone complex as I described it before. We made Abramovich, with Abramovich and Payne, but also Branetti Melo Viviani, this was formalized a little later. Okay? Let me continue. It's okay. So the third step, remember, the third step I mentioned w was involving the analytification of M bar. Let me very briefly tell you what we mean by that. So MGN with AN up is the Berkovich analytification of the stack MGN bar. And it parameterizes uh, stable curves over non-Archimedean valuation fields up to some equivalence. The equivalence essentially is uh, by base change. Well, I will explain maybe, maybe a little bit later. So one point I want to make is that we work here with the Berkovich analytification, not of, not of the scheme MGN bar, but of the stack MGN bar, because of technical reasons we have to use the stack. And to do that, we use a construction of uh, Thuyer, so you see the name Berkovich and Thuyer. So we are really considering the analytification of the stack MGN bar. Okay? So let me uh, explain a little better what this is. So as I said, a, a K is a non-Archimedean valuation field complete, um, possibly not algebraically closed, and uh, a point in it is a stable curve over spec K. So it's a curve over a field, of a valuation field, and up to equivalence just means up to taking um, base change of the evaluation field. So if you want to simplify things, you can think of K as an algebraically closed field. That will work just as well. All right. I will go back to that in a moment. Let me first tell you what a tropical curve is. So a tropical curve, 
A, a tropical curve is, as I said before, a graph, G, plus a length on the edges, which is allowed to be equal to plus infinity. This is exactly what I said before, okay? And now, as I said, the, step, the third step of the program consists in an interesting map from the analytification to the moduli space of tropical curves, okay? And this is what we call the tropicalization map. This was known to many people. Um, so I have a list of names. They are Baker, Payne, and Rabinov, Tiom, Ilya Tiom, Kin, Filippo Viviani, and then Abramovich and Payne and, and me. We um, discovered it and described it in various ways, but this is, this is the really interesting part. So the map goes as follows. You, you um, compose the retraction of the analytification, rho, with the isomorphism between the skeleton and the, tropical, uh, the modular space of tropical curves. And it has a meaning. And the meaning is the following. You have your uh, curve xk over spec k, so it's a curve over a valuation field. Now, the moduli space of stable curves, the classical moduli space of stable curves, is proper. So if you have a curve over a valuation field, that curve has a limit, or what we call a stable reduction, which is a stable curve. I guess this is not working, I'm so sorry. So the stable, curve, the stable curve that you have as a limit is uniquely determined, is uniquely determined by, by the curve over the valuation field. It's, it's a straight x. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and it has a dual graph. The dual graph is g, and that's the underlying graph of the tropical curve we're working with. All right, that's uniquely de determined. That depends only on, those cur on the curve over k. This was, this was well known. This is nothing new. This was new to Mumford and Deligne when they constructed the moduli space of stable curves. But what's new here is that we can also endow the graph with a length on the edges, and that is measuring the local geometry of the total family of the completion of the given curve at the nodes of the central fiber. So let me explain this a little better. You have a curve xk over evaluation field, and you can consider its model over spec r. Up to replacing k with a, with a field extension, you can assume that that exists. All right, so you have a family of stable curves. Now, locally at the central fiber, what's the geometry of this family? Well, if you, t if you are away from the nodes, then that will be smooth you'll have a smooth family. Locally trivial, it's completely easy. If you look at the nodes, the space can be non-regular. And how can it be non-regular? Well, that, of course, depends on the family. And that, that is the L. The length is measuring, exactly, is measuring exactly the local geometry of the total space at each node of the central fiber, OK? For example, if the family is locally trivial, that is, it's a family all of whose fibers are isomorphic to one another, then L will have to be equal to plus infinity, so that you have an idea. Otherwise, then, okay, so that's, that's, the, so the, that's the point. The point is that this, da this datum does not depend on the choice of the base change. It's a, it's a, it's a, it only depends on the original curve. So that's the meaning of this tropicalization map. The tropicalization map associates to a curve over a function over a valuation uh, of a non archimedean valuation field, a tropical curve which encodes the local geometry of its completion by a stable curve. That's the meaning of the tropicalization map. So this was, this was all very nice. We ask, does this scheme apply to other moduli spaces? Um, as I said before, is this a special coincidence that holds for MG and bar, or can, we, can, can this be applied to other moduli spaces? Okay? So the answer is yes, in some cases it does, it does extend, so let me tell you what we know at the moment about this. So the first case I want to illustrate is the case of Hurwitz spaces. So the Hurwitz space, it's a classical space, parameterizes, covers, of a curve of genus G, uh, sorry, of a curve of genus, what did I, what did I write, sorry, a, a curve of genus H, so H is the target and G is the source. So we have a covering of two curves with given, and that's the important point, with given, ram, given ramification profile. So you, you, you decide 
how many how many branch points there are with a certain ramification prof profile. So uh, the, that's exactly what it does. And this this is a classical object. It's well known not to be complete. Completions for for these spacers were studied uh, beginning from uh, at, at the beginning of the 80s by Harris and Mumford, and they introduced the notion of admissible covers. The notion was generalized by, Abramo uh, by Moshe Zuki and then by Abramovich, Korty, and Vistoli, which, which um, generalized the, the setup in the, in the, in the, generalized to the setup I am now discussing. And I use this little bullet, uh, black bullet, to not to write every time GH parenthesis overline pi, but G and H are the genera of source and target, and, and pi, underline pi, is the set of partitions of D, D is the degree which is determined by all the other data, that are given from the start. So you fix that pi underlying pi, you have B partitions for each, for each branch point, and then you have this moduli space. And the, the moduli stack of admissible covers is a, is a, com is a completion, a well known, studied and applied to various situations, and we want to see whether the program applies to this space, okay? I have a bad touch with this thing. So to understand a little better this moduli space, it has the, 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 comp the compactification, of the, the space of admissible cover, it has two canonical maps, to, uh, uh, which takes a cover and maps it to either the source or the target of the cover, okay? The source and the target will be a curve of a given genus with a certain number of branch points or ramification points, depending on whether you're looking at the source or the target. And these are all given. So these two maps are morphisms, morphisms of, of uh, stacks, and they will play a role a little later. So the question on uh, whether this, where should I point this? Maybe I'm pointing at the wrong direction, or this is just... So the, the question um, on whether the program extends to the space of admissible covers has been answered by Cavalieri, Mark Viger, Ranganathan. Let me tell you what they do. They work, so I'm simplifying, but this is what they do. First of all, they study, they carry out step one. Step one of the program was to study the combinatorial structure of the boundary and give it a combinatorial interpretation. That is an interesting combinatorial interpretation. So they did it in, in a very natural way. They associate to every covering C prime to C, admissible covering C prime to C, a, co a graph cover G prime to G, suitably defined, so that uh, the set of all these covers is a poset, which I am denoted by A bullet. So these are the set of all admissible covers of graphs with the same combinatorial data, G, H, uh, pi. And this, this poset has the right structure, has the structure that you want. And it, 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 you can construct the co-limit of, you can construct a, a, the co-limit of a suitable cone complex governed by a, a bullet, and that turns out to be the moduli space of tropical admissible covers as they have been defined by Cavalieri, Mark Viga, and Ranganata. And th those are exactly what you think they are. I mean, it takes some work, but these are coverings of, the tropical coverings are tro coverings of tropical curves. You have a graph, you have another graph, you have a map of graphs satisfying certain conditions, which is parallel to the condition uh, defining admissible covers. And so, uh, just as as in the case of moduli spaces of curves, you have a tropical lesation map from the analytification of the moduli space of tropical admissible covers to the modul sorry, from the analytification of the moduli space of algebraic admissible covers to the moduli space of tropical admissible covers. And that has the same meaning as the meaning that I briefly described for the, the case of stable curves, okay? And, and this is compatible with the, with the source and target map I described before, which, um, <laughs> I'm so sorry, something is wrong. Which direction should I point? There's, there's a machine over there. Uh, I'll try to remember, maybe I use the sign. So this is a commutative diagram. 
uh, due again by, to Cavalieri, Mark Vig, and Ranganathan. They see in this diagram, this is very nice, because in this diagram you see you have the vertical tropicalization maps in the three cases that we are interested in. So the, in the middle you have the admissible covers. In the, the two sides are the moduli space of stable curves that we have seen. Then the diagonal arrows are on the top. You have, this is the, the theory of Berkovich, does, not only does the theory of Berkovich associate to every algebraic scheme an analytic space, but also to every algebraic morphism an analytic morphism. And that's denoted by TGT and AN up, up, up on top. So that's, the, that's a correspondence given by Berkovich's theorem. So you have one for tar target and one for source. And the same happens on the tropical level. You have one for target and one for, for trop. And to make the picture more clear, so here you see, I also put, uh, to make the diagram more complete, I don't know if it is more clear, but I hope it's more complete, I also added the original spaces. You see the new vertical, the two vertical arrows are the reduction maps, the ones I described by stable reduction. So the, that's the map that, to, uh, for example, the one in the middle from the moduli space MGN to MGN bar associates to a curve over uh, valuation field K its stable limit or its stable reduction as we call it. So those are the two maps that and then I of, this is I, 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 I say the same diagram could be on the other side. I only drew it on the on the one side. And then you have the compatibility with the stratification map sigma M that goes there. And See, in here I also added the combinatorial stratification of the moduli space of admissible cover. So that's the new vertical arrow, sigma h denotes the stratification map for the space of admissible covers, and sigma m the stratification map for the space of stable curves. Those are the step one of my program. So this is how it works. All right, so let's, let's look at other cases. So, Another case that I want to look at is, is not one, it's several cases, are moduli spaces of line bundles on curves, on stable curves. So here is the usual notation, I, I think everybody knows anyway. So to remind you, uh, X is a stable curve, G is its dual graph. As usual, the set of nodes is, is, the, uh, is the set of edges, I'm sorry, as usual, the set of edges is denoted by E of G, and this is the set of nodes of X, and V of G is the set of irreducible components of the curve. Then the Picard scheme is, um, is, um, is um, non-complete if the curve is, 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 is singular, let's say, is non-complete, is a union of copies of the generalized Jacobian, and this is well known not to be complete. Each copy pick underline D of X is isomorphic to the Jacobian, where underline D is just the multi-degree, the degree of the line bundle on each component of the curve. This is well known, and this has Comp there exist compactifications of these spaces. Not only, not only do there exist compactification of these spaces, but there exist compactifications that are parameterized over mg bar. So we have a family of compactified Jacobians, one for every d, because, the, because they vary with d, as, as, I will, as it will be implicit in what I will say. And for every d, you have a compactified Jacobian, which I denote by pdg bar over mg bar, whose, whose fiber over a smooth curve is the usual degree decompactified Jacobian, and the fiber over um, a singular curve is denoted by PDX bar, and that's called the degree decompactified Jacobian. It's a projective uh, variety. It may be reducible, okay, but it's projective. So let's see what we can say about this. I wanted to show you uh, recursive compactification. <laughs> so what I, what I want to say is that these compactifications have a recursive structure. And the recursive structure is as follows. So we have, um, we have as I said, uh, the set of nodes of the curve correspond to the set of edges. For every subset of edges, I denote by x nu sub f Please be patient, we need that. X nu sub f is the normalization of the curve only at the nodes in f. So it's a partial normalization, all right? The desingularization of x at f. Then uh, we now look at the case where d is equal to g, which is interesting for various reasons. One is that it, they relate to their own models, as I will mention in a moment. But 
for now, let's just focus on the, strat on the recursive stratification. In that um, displayed equality, the recursive stratification is as follows. The spaces in the union, in the disjoint union, each of them is, uh, is, the, is isomorphic to the Jacobian of a normalization, and then the normalization is the one that's within parentheses. The multi-degree is a multi-degree whose total degree is equal to the genus of the, of the, um, of the, of the, partial, this, of the partial normalization. And then when my pointer will come, I will tell you. <laughs> what OH is, what OP1 G bar is, uh, but let me anticipate that that's a poset, again, this is a poset of so-called rooted orientations. There will be combinatorial terms coming. Um, please take them for, believe what I say, these are uh, well-known combinatorial, combinatorially defined objects. These are rooted orientations. Who did that? <laughs> Miracle. So these are rooted orientations on connected spanning subgraphs of G. This space has, a, has the structure of a graded poset. And so that you understand OH, because you have that OH, OH is a rooted orientation on the dual graph of the curve that you see in parentheses. The curve that's in parentheses has dual graph equal to what is written at the very end. H is equal to G minus FH. That's the dual graph. And now, all of this glues over <laughs> MG bar, and um, no way. <laughs> You're ruining all my surprises. You're going too far. This is <laughs> all right. So what I was saying well, sooner or later. Um, okay, this is this is okay. So this is the di maybe we skipped something, but this is okay. So this is the stratification. This is showing you that the recursive stratification that we uh, describe for every singular for curve uh, extends over mg bar. This is not trivial. This is, this is hard work to do that, combinatorially speaking. So the poset of orientations, of rooted orientations on subgraphs of genus G uh, has a quotient map as posets to the, uh, to the poset of connected subgraphs of graphs of genus G, which itself has a quotient map to the set of, of stable graphs. These are all poset, quotients of posets. And then you have the two stratification map, sigma M and sigma P, that do what they have to do in the sense that step one is carried out. Now, um, the, the rest of the steps is not, the third step is far, is out of reach for the moment. The second step, for the second step, there are some, uh, some partial results, do also do Baker and Rabinoff together with Chris, uh, with whom we did this. Um, may I have my pointer back? Okay, so it went on. Uh, it skipped again the names of Baker and Rabinoff. Um. No, but I was also told that I must finish on time. This is why I'm worried. <laughs> Where is Eduardo? Eduardo told me, you have to finish on time. <laughs> Eduardo, I will. Oh, sorry, you need to point that way, okay? That way, all right. All right, I, I will do my best to finish on time. <laughs> so let me go back. <laughs> okay, so as I said before, this program, the program is okay only for the first parts, and there's some promising work by Baker and Rabinoff that, um, that I, will, I will just want to mention, but this is, there's still a long way to go. All right, so now, um, all right. <laughs> Uh, we have already, already seen this, and now, um, is it me? No, I don't think so. I'm s all right. Okay, this is the slide where I will explain why I want why these Jacobians, compactified Jacobians, are called Neron compactified Jacobians. So the diagram you see is the same diagram as before. The only thing is I added is the is the arrow, the sigma n arrow. 
Now, that arrow is to uh, highlight the fact that the stratification that you get via that arrow is towards, uh, through, is via neuron models of partial desingularizations, again, of the curve. So you have a second recursive stratification of this Jacobian, which is via neuron model. By neuron model, I mean the neuron model of the Jacobian of um, the, the usual, the, of the Jacobian of a family of curves having access special fiber and with smooth total space. This is the usual standard notion of neural model of a curve. So in that, in the, these Jacobians in degree G are important, and not only in degree G, but in degree G we have the, co the combinatorial description, are important because they provide compactification of neural models, and in that sense, the we have a second stratification, which is via neural model, and that's the display you have at the bottom of the slide. You see on the, on the, on the right, you have a disjoint union of neural models of all partial normalizations of the curve, and the H1 of G is the poset of subgraphs, spanning subgraphs of the given graphs that are connected. This is, this is, um, this is the reason why they're called mm, neuron Jacobians. Again, as I said, the program is open for uh, the rest of the steps. There's one final case I want to illustrate, and that's the case of degree G minus one. Now, the case of degree G minus one um, is actually w was known earlier than the case degree G. So it's interesting for various reasons. One of the reasons is that the compactified Jacobians in degree G minus one appear as boundary points of the moduli space of uh, principally polarized stable of the compactification of the moduli space of principally polarized abelian varieties constructed by Alexeyev. So those are semi abelic, uh, stable semi abelic pairs in Alexeyev's sense. There are other reasons why the case G minus 1 is interesting. In fact, it was investigated already by Boville in. In, 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 the 19, in his famous paper in 1977 to understand the Schottky problem and the prime variety. So the, the case of G minus one is, is, has been studied at length for various reasons, also the Torelli map. Now in this case, we have a completely analogous stratification, which is there. Uh, let me not, the, the only difference with the previous one is the stratifying poset. The graded poset is different. Before we used rooted orientations, now we use what, what, what is called totally cyclic orientations. Since I'm not defining them, let's just go on. So there is an interesting stratification. And, and uh, they, they also glue over mg bar, exactly as in the previous case. This is part of the same, the same construction. And we have a diagram, a commutative diagram like that. Here, uh, let me uh, stress the fact that only the first step of the program is completely understood as even less to even less known for the remaining two so there, there's a lot of work to be done but with this diagram i am prompted to go to the next and last uh, situation where the program can be carried out so let me see if i manage to do this in like 10 times i need that otherwise all right, so this is the same diagram as before, where I added in the middle this SG bar. So SG bar is the moduli space of stable spin curves. So this is the compactification of the moduli space of um, stable curves plus a square root of the dualizing sheaf. All right, this compactification is by now classical, it was constructed first by Cornalba and Jarvis, who proved that it has a map pi over SG bar with good properties. The map is completely understood, the pi is a finite map, SG bar has two connected components, and it's a well understood space, and so are all its brothers, that is the, 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 the same objects constructed for curves with, with mark points, also for higher roots, but this is not something we're interested in. And then th this, the thing is that this space SG bar has an injection to the compactified, to the universal compactified Jacobian I described earlier. And this was proved by Fontanari in, in the 90s. All right, so let's see what we can do for this, for this space. For this space, oops, again and again. Maybe I will just go do them all. 
Okay, so this is the situation. We have a recursive structure also, in this case, fiber by fiber. This is, this is easy, actually. This was done by Casa, with Casagrande a while ago. The space SX is the space of theta characteristics of a stable curve. So again, the space of square root of a line, uh, the, the, the space of square roots of the dualizing sheaf. It's a finite set. It has a completion by a zero-dimensional scheme with some non-reduced points, which has a recursive structure, because as you see, every, it's decomposed in terms of theta characteristics on various normalizations. Now, the, uh, the, the scheme structure of that space is very well understood, but let's, so that there is a clear recursive structure also in this case. And but now we are interested in the recursive structure over the moduli space of stable curves, okay? So we can do that again. So to do that, you see, we introduced a, a new pole set, which is written in italics there, SPG. This is the set of stable spin graphs of genus G that encode the geometry of SG bar in the, sense, uh, in the, the same sense we described before. So we have a recursive stratification of the moduli space of uh, stable spin curves by this new, new pole set SPG, where you see to a, a spin curve, a spin curve is just a pair, given by a normalization of the curve and a theta characteristic L sub f on that normalization. So x nu f is a nodal curve connected, L f actually not necessarily connected, I take it back, and L f is, um, is a theta characteristic on x nu f. And the uh, dual spin graph is g, the dual graph of x, g minus f is the dual graph of L f, and s is the spin structure which I will uh, skip. Uh, the definition of which I will skip. All right, so um, uh, then by doing, applying the, the same program, we can uh, establish uh, an isomorphism between the moduli space of extended tropical spin curves and the cone complex constructed out of that pole set, exactly as we did before, in the, in the sense that using the same machine. Using the same machine, uh, we also find a tropicalization map, just as before. And let me just mention that uh, tropical spin curves had been introduced by Zharkov. And then with uh, Melo and Pacini, we uh, defined extended uh, tropical spin curves by enriching the notion, the, 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 the definition given by Zharkov. Actually, it's kind of nice because Pacini is a mathematician working in, in Rio de Janeiro, so I, I have this lucky coincidence of having a collaborator right here. Anyway, so let me finish. I'm almost done. So we have um, um, a diagram that, uh, that uh, summarizes the compatibility of this construction with the little we know about the compactified Jacobian in degree g minus 1, which is not much, as I said. Whereas for spin curves, we understand the, the we know that the, the general phenomenon that I was describing at the beginning works, holds just, just in full in full. For compactified Jacobians of degree g minus 1, we don't. So this is a partial diagram, but at least you have all the objects in the same picture. And all the vertical maps on the right are quotients of posets, that is, um, the quotients in the sense of posets, in the combinatorial sense. And the, re the word cyclic subgraphs there is because there exist spin graphs spin structures only on cyclic graphs. And a cyclic graph is just a graph all of whose vertices have even balance, even degree. That's what it is. And this is, this is, this is um, the complete situation. So in the, last, in the last slide, I want to, as I said, the, the program for spin curves works in general, in the sense it works in full. And it also works for spin curves on curves with mark points. So in that case, we can connect the situation to the to the to the situation for for um, the moduli space of stable curves we I described at the beginning and and see that what we did here for spin curves is completely com consistent with what we've done earlier for curves with stable curves with endpoints. So in this diagram, you have the analytification of the moduli space of spin curves. Uh, now we have mark points because it, it extends. And then the same, the same maps that we had before. So we have the reduction map to the classical moduli space. Let's put this down. 
So we have we have the the. Um, the, the reduction map to the moduli space of stable spin curves, the algebraic geometric one, and then the compatibility with the, with the, with the pi, pi is the canonical map from the moduli space of spin curves to the moduli space of stable curves. It, 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 you have the analytification of pi, so we have a pi n map from the analytification of the moduli space of spin curves to the analytification of the moduli space of stable curves. And then you have the same down at the tropical level. You have the tropical moduli space of spin curves and the tropical moduli space of stable curves, and then you also have the combinatorial, the the, coset, the sorry, the graded posets on which everything is constructed. So maybe I didn't, I didn't before finishing. Let me just make the point that this is, on the one hand, is a way of connecting together different areas of geometry. And there's still a lot to understand. And as I said at the beginning, I would like to understand whether this is a special case or whether for every moduli space that is not complete, we can construct a completion that satisfies that program. This is a completely bold question. And on the other hand, so on the other hand, one should stress that this is a way of making our understanding of the algebra geometric moduli space more linear, in some sense more simple, because the moduli spaces of tropical curves and all of their brothers, tropical spin curves, tropical admissible curves, are much simpler. Are much simpler. They are, they are, they are topological spaces with a, with a Euclidean topology, I mean, a quotient of Euclidean topology. So they, they, they offer a way to understand these spaces that is um, certainly simple, much simpler much simpler. So this is, this is one, another reason why we like to study these things. And I'm done. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Zero. Okay. Thank you very much, Lucia, and sorry for the, the technical glitch. That's OK. No, I'm, I'm very proud of myself. So you don't see this, but we have a watch here, which was 45. 44 and 59, 44, 58. <laughs> and of course, you have you, zero. <laughs> of course, Lu Lucia won the right to have as many questions as we uh, would like to ask. So, who's the first? So, let, let me ask I mean, in the case of uh, moduli line bundles of degree G, that's the non degenerate case, right? Exactly. So, what about the degenerate case? You the said G minus one. Is it more difficult because of that, or what kind of space you actually consider? Uh, I think it's easier. It's easier, okay. but we don't. We didn't do it. We didn't. We didn't do it yet. Uh -huh. So it's open. I, 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 my forecast, my my prediction is that it will be easier. Uh -huh. But we were we we focused on the case of degree G because because. Um, uh, so, after studying the case of degree G, I can answer your question by saying that I think that degree G minus 1 will be easier, all right? Mm -hmm. But we thought that the case of degree G will be easier, but we, 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 then it's not true. So okay. now, after working with these things for some time, mm -hmm. a year or so, my, my prediction is the case of G minus 1 has to be attacked, and, and yeah. it certainly deserves to be attacked. Right, I'm not, not so familiar with Berkovich analytic spaces, but there is a procedure to consider the skeleton of uh, any Berkovich analytic space, isn't there? Uh, can you speak yes, so, more slowly? Yes, uh, these Berkovich analytic spaces, there is a procedure to consider the skeleton of one, right? Yeah, and once you, well. Is it the crucial part of the argument to show that this skeleton has some modal interpretation? In our, well, in our case, the reason the, 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 the skeleton of MGN bar, for example, uh, and, and the fact that it's isomorphic to the analytification of the skeleton, uh, sorry, uh, of the, the, so we have the cone complex constructed from MGN bar on the one side, and then we have the skeleton of the analytification of MG, and, of MG bar AN. All right? The reason why it's it's not such a big surprise that they are isomorphic is that the skeleton of the analytification is constructed. So the analytification uses the, tor the, toroidal, the toroidal structure of the stack. And the toroidal structure reflects, uh, is well known to reflect the combinatorics of the boundary. I'm, I'm being very sloppy, but this is essentially what it is. 
Um, and for, uh, the, the, for, PG, for the compactified Jacobians, we, we don't have, the, for G minus one, we don't have the, the toroidal structure of the stack. So one would need something, but we do have the analytification. So it, it, it has to take some other route. And so I don't know, I don't know which, but certainly it's, it's what I think should be done. I, I don't know if I answered the question. I'm, I'm not you so did. sure. You did, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other question or comment? Okay, if that's not the case, let's thanks again, Lucia.